Live. I'm not sure I should be here. It's crashing out. No, I have a couple of announcements. Okay. Too, real quick. Yep. Morning, Amy. I'm Jill Watson. Um, I've been a member of Concordia since 2014. I'm um, active in our youth ministries. And so I do have just a few quick announcements. Um, we did receive notification this last week. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Um, about that Upper Missouri Ministries was advised not to conduct off-campus ministries. Um, they have a program going right now where they have different camps each week. And so we've been working with them and we are going to continue on excuse me, with the ministry, the BBS ministry. Um, we have four of our youth that are members of the congregation. Um, Kieran Johnson, Allison Kirby, um, Devin Haugen. Uh, they're going to be going down to, excuse me, <clears throat> they're going to go down to UMM and they're going to receive training on their curriculum. And then um, they're going to bring back all the materials that UMM will be teaching um, so that we, as volunteers, which we have, I believe, 10 volunteers um, besides myself and those three. Um, that we will be you know, conducting the BBS with their message. And then we have reached out to a couple of gals that have helped us on the rescue before. And so we're just waiting um, to hear back from them. And so we have it very organized. We have um, safety in mind. The reason that they were advised not to um, go off campus is because being in Epping, um, there's a spike in Williston, or Williams County. Um, we have not experienced that here. We still have no cases. Um, we are taking every precaution with our kids. We will have them split into small groups, have the same instructors with them. Um, we'll be having snack in our classrooms. Um, in between the two sessions, we do have two sessions this time. Um, the younger kids are pre-K and kindergarten and they will go from nine until noon. And then um, there's a recess for lunch and then we will clean the building with disinfectant, you know, advised by the CDC, the disinfectant that UMM was going to use. Um, and then we will have older kids come from one until five. And so we won't have, you know, them crossing. We'll be in classrooms and not using the whole church. And so just so you know, we have a complete procedure. 
procedure on how we're going to handle the program. Um, we'll be posting on ConcordiaCrosby.org today all the information as far as uh, who's involved and so that you have confidence in seeing members of our congregation that have been active with our children ministry. And so if you guys have any questions at all, you can reach out to me. Um, I would be very happy to answer any of your questions that you might have. We had an education meeting um, to go over you know, what we have planned. We have Amanda Hubble, who is also on the board for um, UMM. So we are very, you know, our communication line is very strong and open. And so um, I'd like to assure you that we're prepared and we're very much looking forward to getting the kids back into the church. Um, with that being said, real quick, I'm sorry that I'm going to take a lot of time today, but um, we have a program that we've been talking about um, with our youth, and it's called the Hello Neighbor Project. And so if you haven't heard about it um, on or at the annual meeting for Concordia, um, there was a motion made that um, after a proposal that the church council would be able to make any decisions pertaining to the project. And so the part of the project that we've been working on, um, and that being myself and some of the younger um, youth in our congregation, um, they applied for a grant for the Andres Foundation. It was a scholarship opportunity for them. And the project is um, for a play place here at Concordia. And so it would have um, just set fixtures. There's no renovations or anything like that going on um, in the blue youth room downstairs. And so there's information on that on ConcordiaCrosby.org. But they were awarded $10,000 from the Andrus um, Fund for their idea. And then each one of them receives a $5,000 scholarship to um, the College of Their Choice. And so they submitted applications, um, a plan, um, with their goal being to have a place for um, our children in the community to come with their parents um, to play during the winter months, just because, you know, isolation and how long that goes. And so I do have information on that that I'll give back with Rod back there. But you can find any of the information of anything that I talked about on ConcordiaCrosby.org. And so that's going to be like our main communication hub. I know that there's been feelings of disconnect and we have been working hard to um, narrow that gap. So thank you for your time. I'm sorry, Amber. Thank you, Jill. Um, we are, are we still needing donations for meals then or no? Um, there will be feeding of the volunteers at lunchtime and then at five o'clock. So we are um, still accepting donations for the program. And so um, you can either find information about that on Crosby, ConcordiaCrosby.org or contact Sherry in the office. So donations are still needed for meals for the counselors that we have um, in-house. And that would be a noon meal, and at 5 o'clock, you know, after they're done um, with the older kids. And any volunteers are welcome also. Uh, donations can be placed in the drop box outside, or put in the offering plate uh, with the designation of the check for the envelope for that. Um, and we would like to thank the congregation um, for the donations that we have received. You guys have been very generous and we really appreciate you guys. So in case you didn't hear Jill in the back, she said that there was already a lot of donations received for this and um, they are very much appreciated. Um, we'd also, before we start today, um, we'd like to extend safety to the family and friends of Bryce Shipman. Um, Bryce is Z Pastor Zach's um, uncle, and he passed away suddenly um, a couple days ago. And so please keep his uh, family and friends of Bryce in your prayers. Also, we extend sympathies to the family and friends of Connor Nygaard. 
Connor was is the son of Brad Nygaard, and he passed away suddenly at the um, military base in Colorado. Um, it is unknown uh, at this time what what the situation was, but we want to keep Brad and his family in, in our prayers as well. Next slide, Julian. I'm not exactly sure how it, how it, what it looks like, so. Okay, we'll continue with confession and forgiveness. I'm going to just turn around because this is different than what it has on the screen, so. Let us get our hearts and minds ready for uh, praise for Jesus. Lord, blessed be the Trinity, Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious, Gracious God, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned from you and, and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us your sins, known and known, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we have lived and served you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We will continue with the prayer of the day. Oh, now we're doing a gathering song. All right, I will start the gathering song. And when I originally did this sermon, I had to sing all the songs and do all the music and do all of the talking. So. Bear with me, I picked some contemporary songs today, so um, come along as you wish, or if you know it, uh, feel free. And I will lead, lead you guys.
grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the prayer of the day. Lord God, use, use our, our lives to touch the, the world with your love. love. Stir, Stir us by your spirit, spirit to be neighbor to those in need, serving them with willing, willing hearts, through your, your song, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 through 19. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. Here 
stands for the reading of our first lesson. Our psalm today is Psalm 100. I printed it all out for Ambrose, and then I didn't even think to bring it along to use uh, here. <laughs> joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering pr produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rare, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here ends the reading, second reading. Our gospel today begins in, chap in Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 35, and continuing into chapter 10 through verse 23. Please rise for the reading of our gospel. went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for your journey or extra shirt or sandals or staff. For the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy, 
person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are pers persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the man, Son of Man comes. Here is the reading of our Gospel. Please be seated. I bet my wording was a little bit different than on the screen. I just realized that. But it's the same message. <laughs> In our gospel lesson for this morning, we get a beautiful description, a beautiful glimpse of what motivates Jesus to do what Jesus does. Jesus has been moving from town to town, Preaching, teaching and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing the sick and the diseased. And we are told that Jesus saw the crowds. When Jesus looked at the faces of the people, he came across. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. The description of harassed and helpless paints a picture of a predator and its prey where the prey is continually mangled by the predator until it gives up and just lies down and takes it. Does this sound like our world to you? Does this sound like social media? Mainstream media? More often than not, I see and read the constant peck, 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 chipping away at anyone and everyone who doesn't believe the way, same way they do. Whether it be politics, don't get me started on politics. The Black Lives Matter movement, the handling of COVID-19 precautions. Should we open the doors or shouldn't we? Should we wear masks or shouldn't we? Why should Walmart be open and not the hair salons? There's a constant judgment of one another, a constant judgment of one another in their beliefs of right or wrong, and it's downright exhausting. In our reading today, Jesus sees folks who are without a shepherd, without a knowledge of God in this world. If we look, we can see it too. Sheep without a shepherd. Sheep who don't know the love of God. Or, who call, or his call to love one another as he loves us. They are wandering around aimlessly, not knowing where they are headed or where they might be healed, lashing out because it's the only thing they know how to do. And so they try this, and they try that, and they find out this doesn't work. And they move on to another falsehood, and they fall into yet another trap of ugliness and greed. These shepherdless sheep are powerless to change their own lives, and there is no one who will step in to show them the way, show them Jesus' way. There's no one willing to get in there and do the work that needs to be done to bring in the harvest. 
Do you know people like that? Those shepherdless sheep? Yes. Those who are harassed and helpless in our community? Maybe it's the carryout guy at the grocery store, the cranky neighbor, the man who just lost his wife to alcoholism. How about the woman who is now clean and sober and off drugs, but she can't find a job because no one will give her a chance? Maybe it's a family member who has lost their way. Often it is those who don't know any other way. They weren't raised in a loving, God-fearing home. They don't know what the love of Christ is like because they've never truly experienced it. Seek and you shall find. If we open our minds and our hearts, our eyes and our ears, we will see people all around us who are in need of God's loving kindness. What is Jesus' response to seeing the crowds of who are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd? His response is compassion. This is what motivates Jesus to do what Jesus does. Compassion. Jesus' whole ministry is about love and compassion. Now, compassion, by definition, is a feeling of deep sympathy or sorrow for the plight of another, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. This is what Jesus experiences when he sees our world. This is what our God is like. Compassion is the opposite of indifference. It is not a spectator sport. It requires action. Amen. I don't know about all of you, but I'm a sports fan. I used to play sports in high school, and I spent several years playing softball and curling when I lived in Williston. But it's been a while. <laughs> For many years, I have spent a lot of time traveling with my kids, putting in volunteer hours in kitchens and food stands, making posters and selling raffle tickets, as well as going to games and cheering on their teams. I'm also a Twins fan, a Minnesota Wild hockey fan, and a Vikings fan. No boy. <laughs> we have a lot of avid sports fans in our community, and many of these fans probably haven't played sports in years either, but they love to watch and cheer on their team. Of course, there's also the great concessions and the burgers and the popcorn and the drinks, and then the bathroom breaks from all the popcorn and burgers and drinks. <laughs> and then we come back and cheer them on some more, some louder than others. <laughs> but as Christians, are we supposed to be spectators or players, fans or followers? Being a fan of Jesus is not the same as being a follower of Jesus. Being a fan is a spectator sport. Being a follower is being in relationship, Amen. working with Jesus on the front lines, whatever it takes. I have spent a lot more time, money, and effort into following my kids' teams than I have cheering on the Vikings or the Twins. And although I'm bummed when the Vikings lose in the playoffs, which they always do, <laughs> It's a whole different kind of heartache when my daughter loses the championship hockey game her senior year. It's a different kind of relationship, for sure. So what is Jesus calling us to do? It's pretty easy to decipher his, mess his message in our scripture reading today. Jesus doesn't want us to be fans or spectators. He wants us to be followers to go out into the trenches and show our compassion for others, to put in the time and the effort, to share the good news with others. He wants us to do something. Amen. Go out into the world and do something to show love for others. But in the face of so much need, it's hard to even know where to begin. This reminds me of the story of Samuel in the Old Testament when he was staying at Eli's house. It's in 1 Samuel 3, starting at verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose sight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. 
the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, lie down again. So he went and he lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the, word, the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I first heard this story in Sunday school as a very young child. It is one of the stories that has stuck with me. How many times have I been like Samuel, where God has been calling me to listen to him and to carry out his work, and I haven't been listening? How many times has he been calling me and I haven't answered him? How many times have I been angry or disappointed in how something has been done or not done and never stepped up to help? How many times have I complained about the problem but not tried to be part of the solution? It's easy to complain about this or that, especially in our day and age with social media and instant news. But it's a lot harder to actually hear God's often small voice in the midst of it. His call to be a part of the solution, show compassion for one another, to love one another, and to do something to be part of the solution rather than complain about the problem. There have been various articles in our news lately, both locally and regionally and nationwide, about people who have made poor choices done things that were not legal or not morally right. And it is shocking to me how cruel others can be to those people. Yes, poor choices were made. No, what that person did was not right. But it is not okay to then beat that person into the ground for it. We are all sinners. We have all made mistakes in our lives that we are not proud of. Because to God, using his name in vain is a sin, just as having an affair is a sin. God doesn't say in the Bible that this sin is more serious than that sin. Sin is sin is sin. And we pray over and over, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God calls us to show compassion and forgiveness towards those who have made poor choices, just as God shows us compassion and forgiveness when we sin against him. I had two songs that fit today's sermon, and I have been struggling to choose which one to sing. So I'm going to share the lyrics of one and sing the other. We're going to sing the other. Here's the lyrics for this song. I woke up this morning, it's called Do Something by Matthew West. I woke up this morning, saw a world full of trouble now, and thought, how do we ever get down so far? And how's it ever gonna turn around? And so I turned my eyes to heaven, and I thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty, children sold into slavery. The thought disgusted me. So I shook my fist at heaven and I said, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I created you. If not us, then who? If not me and you, right now, it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? Will we see an end to all this pain? Oh, it's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. I'm so tired of talking about how we are God's hands and feet, but it's easier to say than to be. 
Live like angels of apathy who tell ourselves, it's all right, somebody else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of life with no desire. I don't want a flame, I want a fire. And I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. We are the salt of the earth. We are a city on a hill. We're never going to change the world by standing still. No, we won't stand still. If not us, then who? If not me and you, right now, it's time for us to do something. If not now, then when? Will we see an end to all this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. So as you go back home to work, back to work, back to family and friends, back to shopping for groceries and picking up the mail and eating out, back to all those things we have missed in these last few crazy months, go out and do something. Amen. Be aware of opportunities to extend compassion to others. Be God's hands and feet today and every day. There's plenty to do if we just look for it. If we listen for God's sometimes small voice. Let others see God's love and compassion. Let others see God's love and compassion through you. Showing love and compassion to those around us and around the world will bring in the harvest for God. Amen. Amen.
Save that for the end. Huh. All right, we'll continue with our Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy, of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with our prayers of intercession. Lord, we pray for your church in every time and place that we might carry on Jesus' ministry of healing. Lord, give strength and encouragement for all the world's believers that they might actively participate in God's call to do something. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all ministers of the gospel, including Pastors Emily and Zachariah Shipman, Pastor Janet Wynn, Pastor Dennis Neufeld, and Father Bill Cosgrove, and the incoming Father at St. Patrick's Catholic Church, and all others who serve as lay pastors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world recovering from this global pandemic, heal our planet and provide us with weather that will help us nourish and sustain crops and livestock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For, the, for the, all those who hold office in our land, especially President Trump and Governor Burgum, that they might make wise decisions that benefit all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, help us to love one another and show compassion for each other through these difficult times. We especially lift up to you those on our prayer list. Larry Gilbertson, Tamara Sen, Doreen Winston, Gerilyn Johnson, Kate Woods, Don Engel, Bruce Berlindi, Jordan Paulson, Butch Hovland, Larry Peterson, Jamie Shipman, Glenda Nygaard, Andrew Grunston, Bud Molander, Paul Anderson, Lauren Owens, Jamie Lee Stewart, Axel Bosti, Carol and Judy Hokinson, Jerry Dean, Wanda Olson, Leonard and Marie Berkman, Terry Holston, Jim Grody, Tom Littleton and Gail Severin, Mason Watry, Brian Brody, Mark and Amanda Eastwold, Bob Crashes, Evan, Ray Noreen, and Dale Holland, and those who may be for you now, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals, for medical maintenance and housekeeping staff, and for all who are working to eradicate this pandemic, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grocery store workers, truckers, and all who keep the food supply chains open, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving all the faithful departed, especially those who died during this pandemic, and for all those who grieve their deaths. Today, we particularly remember Bryce Shipman and Connor Nygaard. Thank you for giving them to us to know and to love. Through their faithful witness, we continue to set our hope on Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, keep all your beloved children safe from disease. Draw near to us, 
for only in you can we live in safety. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us praise our Lord taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I forgot the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Please receive the blessing. Part of which is adapted from works by Rab Rabbi Yosef Panevsky. Took me a long time to learn how to pronounce that. May every hand that you don't shake today become a phone call that you place. May every embrace that you avoid become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. May every inch and foot you physically place between you and another become a thought as to how you might be of help to the other should the need arise. May you be the workers, the hands and feet of God, and find opportunities to do something. Amen. Amen. Now is our sending song. to the Lord.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.